And then in terms of like um, transferring from a sport to into like coxing, where you're more sort of, we've talked about it again before, you're almost sort of half coach. Like mm. for you, you liked taking that role on and that, as opposed to the other sports that you've done. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd gone from being a very active athlete to a passive athlete. Yeah. That is essentially what coxing is. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you, and I'll, I'll get into the, the heart rate thing in a little bit because that was quite interesting. But I I enjoyed exercising. I enjoyed being out there and doing stuff. And so, obviously, being sat down for most of the time of a, a, of a piece of sport or an exercise session, yeah. you feel like very itchy, like you want to do something. So I actually, from about 15 years old, I started getting on the ergo and doing the sessions with the rowers Yeah. Um, so that I was both, A, getting that element of the fitness that I wanted out of it, but also that I was learning the rowing stroke, that I was showing the guys that I was as committed as they were, and it definitely helped build a, a good bond with the with the rowers. Yeah, I think that's so important. We had a question when we did our Q&A. Someone said, how, you know, how can, as a cox, can I stand out? And I think that's one thing we said was like, be involved, like just because you're not needed for a session because it's a land session. Like, I think it's awesome to stay involved. And like you said, like, that's a great way to say it, like a passive athlete. You you are still an athlete. You are, like, weight managed. You are going to need to be fit. Like you said, your heart rate is going to be mad. Mm. I can imagine, like, after the end of a big race as a cox, like, getting out of the boat, you'd want to, like, go and do something. Like, you, you, like well, as a rower, you get all this excitement, but then you get to, like, go and blow it all out. Mm. But I guess as a cox, in the same way, you, you scream and shout and blow it out that way. When I raced at Henley in uh, 2019, there was a, uh, a Brooks athlete. She was doing uh, her degree on heart rate vari variability of coxes and how that relates to rowers. Okay. And so there were a number of coxes from different clubs, different levels that she got to wear heart rate monitors for quite big races. Yeah. And um, uh, she asked me to wear it for the semifinal I raced with Leander against the Dutch under 23s. And the profile of my heart rate almost follows exactly what went on in the race. Yeah. There was like an initial spike. It calmed down a little bit, but just as we weren't quite edging out how we wanted to, in fact, went down, then the heart rate started to come up. There's a little bit of a dip. And then just as the race doesn't seem to be going our way, your heart rate starts to go up because you're trying to incentivize. Decision to be made. Yeah. 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 And, um, uh, you know, I hit 198 beats per minute in that race. Okay, wow. And I held that wow. for about wow. three and a half, four minutes. That, my, that's that's max. That's max. Well, my rate. max heart rate is about 214. Yeah. Um, and uh, so what's interesting is that the the rowers, their heart rates come up because of exertion, mm -hmm. but coxes are riding just an adrenaline wave for six minutes, and the same thing happens to them heart rate wise. So you all, and, and almost at the end have the same like. Come yeah. down feeling. Well, that's well, that's, that's one of the reasons why the coxes are the ones who just kick off the most because that's the only way that you you have a release from the adrenaline yeah, if you yeah. cross the line and you're in a winning position. Yeah, have so you're just like yeah, yeah. Um, and and then you steadily come down and you just go, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the end of a race. Uh -huh. It's a it's a it's a very unique position from any sports. Um, the coxing, isn't it? You're half athlete, half coach. You know, you're, you're in charge of everything. Uh, you're making decisions tactically in the middle of a race. Things are changing. I think it's like, it's a, and I think it doesn't, often doesn't get given enough credit. I mm. mean, we've talked about this before as well. Like, I think you just, it's just not a job I think I could do. You know, like, all I've got to do is sit there and pull really hard and, and just listen to whoever's talking to me. I've done a lot of my racing in, in an eight, so I've had a lot of coxes. And then, well, another thing is, you know, on a winter morning, when you're going out to do an outing and you're a rower, mm. well, it's cold, but you're going to get warmed up. I said, Cox, you might get splashed about. Oh, yeah. It's cold, it's freezing, and you just have no way of actually getting yourself warm other than try and raise your heart rate, the adrenaline, that kind of thing. No, exactly. I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the reason why you do the sport is for all the fun summer racing yeah. in, you know, in the sunshine and everything. And obviously, um, you know, you have to go, th go through that winter period from like November through to February where it's raining or it's snowing or it's sub-zero temperatures and you are you know you physically have no way to warm yourself up so you're yeah. just sat in the conditions yeah and um i mean i get rainos in my fingers and toes so that's not helpful so that's uh to explain that's uh, like a yeah. blood uh capillary circulation stuff. problems at uh normal temperatures basically and then it just gets really painful yeah the the, the warming up process when your fingers go white um because they're not getting enough blood and then when you try and warm them up 
obviously the blood going back through the capillaries is extremely painful. And most people at some point, after having got really cold, will experience that sort of heat, that fiery heat of yeah. like running. It's like it's like your yeah. hands are sort of pulsing. Like yeah, that. yeah. And I think I think that's something to remember for uh, as a rower. Um, who's got up? You've got up very early, and you've gone out and you've done your session. You've also got your exercise in. You've you've done something good for your body. Like the cox has turned up and sat there and done a session for you, and it's going to have to go and do their fitness at some other point. Like I think like rowing's a great thing. Oh yeah, you have to get up early and all the rest of it. But you get you know you get your fitness done. You get a workout. It's kind of kind of a double double win. Yeah. Whereas you got to remember your cox is there, not not doing any of that, and still sitting up. So, I mean, yeah. At the end of the day, you can't go out without one. So. Um, I think it's good. 